I'm at the 2018 New York International Auto Show giving you a, a quick uh, tour of the show, highlighting some of the most interesting cars. Uh, so I hope you find this interesting. Uh, so let's get to it. Uh, this early pass that I got was supposed to bring zero people here, uh, but unfortunately it's pretty crowded. So what have we here? We have a Focus RS, a Ford GT. And to any car enthusiast, this is a beautiful car. And to me, it surely is. It's a twin turbo V6 engine that produces quite a lot of horsepower. People. People complain that it doesn't have a V8, but if I had the money for a car like this, I would not be complaining about that. A 2019 Mustang Bullet. Uh, 480 horsepower, I believe, uh, and it's a, it's a pretty, pretty iconic vehicle. This is a Hyundai Kona, very, very cool, cool vehicle in a subcompact uh, division. Let's see on the inside. It looks very nice and modern on the inside. Uh, the new Santa Fe, which I really, really like. Santa Fe has been Hyundai's great, great seller. And uh, this one just looks beautiful. This is a Hyundai Tucson. My father-in-law has one and he loves it. And this one is very nicely updated, I'm already seeing. I'm sensing a trend with, uh, with Hyundai's with the new interior. Uh, you got the kind of BMW inspired center console. Uh, I love the buttons on the side. Veloster and I. Uh, this car has been getting a lot of positive press uh, because this is your new pocket rocket and this also again a very similar interior it's funny the screen doesn't have the buttons on the side uh, but nevertheless you have a six-speed manual transmission if you watch Top Gear actually UK Top Gear uh, Joey Tribbiani or rather Matt LeBlanc did a great review of the of the Demon on the UK Top Gear season 25. Uh, check it out if you haven't seen it uh, because uh, he gave it glowing reviews and I can see why. I mean, it's a, it's a great car. It goes awesome in a straight line, but would you daily drive it? I don't know, it's like a boat. Now, so this is the new Tiguan. Uh, this is a vehicle I used to love, the uh, the Alltrack. Well, I look at it as a Jetta station wagon with all-wheel drive. Uh, give it to me with, uh, with a manual transmission and I will be a happy camper. Artin. Uh, this is supposed to be Volkswagen's uh, uh, Grand Coupe equivalent of the A5 Sportsback. And it does look pretty decent. But this one, the Atlas, has been a great, great seller. I've been seeing a lot of them on the street. And this car is looking very, very sexy. A lot, a lot, uh, a lot nicer than the Audi Q7. This is the Atlas to own. I take that back. I would not get the other one. I would probably go with this because this... I'm, I'm very much into pickups now, actually. And I kind of want to say that I would like my next car to be a pickup. But this pickup Atlas uh, uh, is just beautiful. Now, <laughs> look at... This is, this is kind of interesting. Look at, the, uh, look at the Atlas. And now, look at the GTI and the, uh, and the Passat completely completely boring designs compared to the new Atlas so Volkswagen needs to step it up with the new GTI or this is actually a Golf R uh, they need to really step it up because those cars are looking extremely extremely dated this is the all-new Jetta this to me is very much Alpha inspired uh, this is uh, ZL1 uh, it's got a couple of other names attached to it but this apparently is a great great vehicle it's illegal in Europe because of these uh, spoilers in the front uh, but here in the US of A the car is very much legal and it's an absolute bargain $72,000 and you get uh, basically an M4 Porsche killer uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's an amazing car at the track this car is going to make an, an amazing rental. 18 Chevy Colorado and it says it starts at 20,000 which I think is a steal. This one probably is a lot more expensive but for someone who's looking for a small pickup I feel like this is a no-brainer. When this first came out 
people were like, yes, we have a new pocket rocket. This is going to be the next big thing, especially since it comes with a, with a manual transmission. Guess what? I have never seen one on the street. I've been looking forward to uh, seeing the new Kias because Kias have been, the Kia Kia has been producing some of the most refreshing cars uh, of the season. So this is the uh, the new Optima K900. Uh, this is supposed to be uh, rivaling uh, the I guess the E class maybe or maybe the S class. Guys, this is the Stinger. This is the Stinger that has been getting some great reviews. Now we can probably sit in the Stinger. All right, so I'm sitting in the new Stinger and uh, I have a backpack on, I don't want to take it off. Uh, but first thing I notice is, yes, it's a great, great looking car, but look at this, this cheap looking uh, airbag. Why wouldn't you at least upgrade the airbag? It still has the design from all the cheap Kias, that little cheap plastic. That's the, that's like the thing you see when you drive the car. Why would you not put a, like maybe like a leather covered airbag or something? This is just your typical plastic airbag and I hate it. But. I do not hate the interior because the interior is absolutely beautiful. Uh, it's very, very Audi inspired with these switches here. They do feel kind of solid. Uh, uh, so, not bad. That screen, oops, sorry. Why have such a big bezel here? If you want your car to look premium, get rid of the bezel. Uh, the, uh, the, all the new flat screen TVs have these tiny, tiny bezels. Why do you need a, a thick bezel here on a car like this? If you're trying to sell this car and appeal it to people who care about technology and people who care about design, at least step it up a little bit. But nevertheless, I feel like it's Kia's amazing start. And uh, like I said before, this is gonna be probably a, a really, really terrific seller. This is your twin turbo V6, 3.3 liters, 365 horsepower, and an eight speed automatic transmission. Uh, the turbos sit on the side, so they don't necessarily follow the new trend of sticking the, uh, the turbos in the V, uh, but it's still a very exciting car. So we're getting to the tuning section of the Stinger. And I gotta say, my friend Lucas is gonna love it. The orange Stinger, it's a, it's a pretty nicely done car. Look at this one, this is a wide body example. Uh, but wow, this is kind of cool. And let's see if Nissan has anything interesting to offer. <laughs> Look at the little Sentra. It just looks completely, completely dated. So does the GTR. Uh, GTR is due for a major, major upgrade, and uh, this is just not cutting it. Sorry, Nissan, you've got to, you've got to step it up. This is the new Accord. Now, look at it. The interior of the Accord is beautiful. It's, uh, I like the center console. I love the seats. The design in the front. Ugh, look at this angle here. What is that? But overall, I guess the design in the front is fine, but in the true spirit of a Volvo S80, what they did was, I know I'm gonna show you that one, bam, they completely screwed up the back. I don't know if this is a trend with these automakers to make backs look really, really ugly, but this back just doesn't look good at all. Now what does look good is this new CRV. Uh, this is gonna be Honda's probably hottest seller uh, because it's, uh, it always has been. And uh, this one is redesigned for this year just really really nicely appointed leather interior uh, you have the center screen that's touch screen it's got great great Apple play capability and they did not screw up the back the back looks decent now this looks decent look at that Ugh, look at the type R all right I'm sitting in the 2018 Honda Civic type R and I'm trying to adjust the steer can I adjust the steering wheel Yes, I can. What? Don't tell me I can't adjust the steering wheel. Can I not pull the steering wheel out? Am I just not finding it? If you... If you can prove me wrong, uh, please comment below. But it seems that I cannot pull the steering wheel more forward to me. Uh, but I've got to say, the seats are really, really comfortable. Uh, very comfortable, actually. Uh, more comfortable than my M3 seats, I want to say. Nice back support, a nice uh, a lumbar support, and they look super sexy. Look at these, I guess that's suede or Alcantara. Uh, the, <laughs> but then you go to the back, look at the back, plain seats. At least 
just step it up and, and put sporty seats in the back. Why cheap out Honda? Come on, don't cheap out on us like this. Uh, but overall, I feel like if I had $30,000 to spend, not 40, $30,000 to spend, I would absolutely consider this car. This is the new 2019 Subaru Forester. Very, very similar to the outgoing model, uh, the CX-9. Look how beautiful the interior is. You've got to love that center screen. It looks like it hides down, but it does not. It always stays that way. The uh, the seats are nicely sculpted, and this leather is actually very beautiful. The center console is very, very cool looking. Imagine seeing this every day on your drive. That's got to be a good feeling. I would absolutely drive something like that. All right, we are entering now what is probably one of my favorite sections, a Porsche section. So this is a Carrera T that Jerry Seinfeld, Seinfeld says he inspired uh, Porsche to bring back. The 718 Cayman, don't sit on the car, GT3 RS. My friend Phil owns, uh, owns one and I know everything about these cars. This is just uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful machine. Boxster GTS, say what you want to say, but this is a sexy, sexy car. The new Cayenne is actually looking a lot better than the outgoing model. The back is definitely, definitely uh, improved. The car sits very low. Uh, interior of it is, of course, very pretty, very Porsche-like. You've got that frameless, rimless uh, uh, touchscreen in the middle. Uh, the steering wheel is nice and small. The gauges look great. The seats are very nicely appointed. And then you move to the front, and you move to the front and you get that Kia Hyundai-like front, which I still do not like. Panamera e-hybrid. I think this is one of the nicest looking Porsches Porsche has ever made. Uh, I mean, look at this. Okay, so I don't know if I missed something, but uh, I was hoping to see a GT3, because that's the car I want to own in a couple of years. There was no GT3. There was also no GT2 RS. So let's get to the next section. F-Type, F-VR, uh, I think 500 and something horsepower, pretty cool, it gives you an appearance of a wide body, but it's really not, this is the same standard design, uh, I don't know if it's going to sell well because it hasn't been a very well received SUV, it looks kind of boring, especially with the lights in the back, but what doesn't look boring is this cool SUV, I mean uh, station wagon. <laughs> The XF station wagon and let me show you the interior why some people love it some people hate it for me I think it's just not premium enough uh, I don't think I would pay $90,000 which is what this car I believe costs for something that uh, that looks like this I would instead go for the uh, for the E-class station wagon this is a pretty interesting car I used to think this was the sexiest car ever made this is a 575 horsepower example, judging by the badge. The interior of it, you know you're riding in luxury. Uh, just look how beautiful this interior is. The, the diamond stitching seats, beautifully bolstered. Uh, this gorgeous interior, suede headliner. Look at that, that's bowler. Although that would piss me off. And this probably is going to get pretty uh, pretty old very, very quickly. We're in the Land Rover section now. And quite frankly, Land Rover has been due for an upgrade for a long time now. Uh, this is your Evoque. This is your Discovery. Discovery is a, is a pretty new addition to the lineup. Uh, but the back just doesn't do it for me. You can throw up. And, and the fact that the license place is so off-center would piss me off. Oh. oh, this is the SV Coupe. That's what it is. Uh, pretty pointless if you ask me. Uh, it just doesn't sit right. Uh, but you know what? A lot of rappers and hip hoppers will probably buy it. Uh, this is the SVR, which in my mind is pretty, pretty sexy. This is obviously the Velar, and the Velar has such a beautiful interior. Uh, just take a look inside. the BMW section where I'm gonna highlight some some new I don't know if they have that many new models but well, since I'm a BMW fanboy now uh, I want to geek out on some BMWs all right I was granted special access to see the uh, M1 I'm kidding it's open for everyone uh, but this is cool this is like seeing your childhood ch childhood hero this one looks to have been modified looks like a racing race spec one but 
Oh my God, what a beautiful car. Now on the inside, I bet you it's very basic because again, it's a, it's a race prepped car, but this is what these cars pretty much look like from factory other than those racing seats and the toggle switches and everything. Uh, but oh wow, love it. Holy crap. Yep, this is a one beautiful example. So this is the same one that I have, except a different color. And I've got to say, I love it. M2 over here. You've got your M4 convertible, F83. You've got the M5 in that frozen red. Say what you want to say about this car. I don't like it, the back is too boring. The whole car itself is just too boring. It, I feel like once you once you give it uh, some wheel spacers and uh, and lower it a little bit, it might look a lot more appealing, but the way it currently stands, I don't know what people really are so excited about when it comes to this car. Maybe it's the technology that uh, that lies inside, but even the interior, I mean the interior, yes, okay, it is, it is a pretty interior, but is it a revolutionary interior? No. Okay, I dare to say, and I'm, I know many of you will disagree, but I dare to say that this, the M550i back, looks better than the M5. I, I, I don't know what I what it is about the M5, but the just it doesn't the diffuser doesn't do it for me. This one is just perfect in my opinion. And that Ferrari red is just oh so pretty. Say what you want to say but I am I'm not very happy with this year's uh, BMW selection at the auto show. And it, this actually made me realize that BMW is due for a major, major upgrade uh, of most of their uh, their lineup. Uh, compared to the competitors, they seem very, very outdated. So come on, BMW, step it up, and let's see something new next year. You've got the new GLE. That's just it looks. I feel like it looks cool. This car does not appear appeal to uh, family people. This car appeals to wannabe rappers. So if you're a wannabe rapper, this is probably the car you're gonna have. Wow. Holy moly, the G-Wagon has been uh, updated and it looks a lot, a lot better. I've got to say, it's uh, it received a few rounded edges which give the car uh, a very modern look. I really like it. It's probably still very uh, non-aerodynamic and, uh, and handles like a dog, but it looks a lot, a lot better. Holy crap. And check out this interior. This interior is bar borrowed from the uh, from the new E-Class, kind of, and it just looks really, really terrific. I love it. So good job, Mercedes, uh, on redesigning a classic. Now, if a manual transmission was uh, not my requirement for buying a car, I would absolutely consider this the C63 AMG S. Uh, obviously, it sits completely wrong it needs some spacers and it needs to be lowered I mean look at it you can probably go off-roading in that thing but once you once you take care of that it's just an absolute beauty this car I'm sitting in the c63 AMG and I want to know exactly what all the fuss is about with these cars people rave about this car and they say the interior is very beautiful and I've got to say the interior is beautiful but I still do not care about the center console I think there's just too much too much uh, carbon fiber, too much flatness, and uh, but the screen looks very nice. Uh, the bezel is on the thin side. Speaking of the thin side, the uh, the steering wheel seems to be on the thin side as well. I like the steering wheel on my M a little better. The seats that I'm sitting in are very, very nicely sculpted, uh, super supportive, and again, uh, much more comfortable than my M3 seats. The C63 AMG. Uh, has been slightly redesigned and updated for uh, this year with uh, with more horsepower and uh, and redesigned front and back. And this is the AMG GT 63S. Talk about a name. Right. We are entering the Lexus world. This LC is a great highway cruiser. Apparently, I think it looks terrific and it sounds great. Oh, there you go. We get the, to see the interior. Look how futuristic this interior is. I love a Lexus. Volvo has a very soft spot in my heart because I used to own, well, actually I still own one. And uh, the one, so these are pretty standard ones. You have your V90 cross country, which has been around for, uh, for a year now. This is probably the sexiest station wagon in production right now. I wanted to see the new V60. And I think this is 
the second best uh, station wagon in production. This is the new XC40 and holy moly. Alright, I hope I can get to see it inside. Oh, it's closed. Why would you close a car that's supposed to be such a such a hot seller? Uh, but this is just a really really great looking SUV. Unfortunately, it's closed so I can't look at it inside. Uh, but look at this little touch. Uh, what does Audi have new uh, this year? They have the uh, the R8 that's not new. Uh, TT RS, which is, is it new? But this year, not new. Uh, but this is uh, basically a, a Golf on steroids. RS5. I've got to say, in person, the RS5 looks really, really mean. This is the RS5 Grand Coupe, if you will. And that is the car to own for me. If I were to ever sell my M3 and I would want something that unfortunately doesn't have a manual transmission, but something that can be fun and haul my family, this is the, car. the Volkswagen Atlas. Oh, no, no, sorry. This is the Audi Q7. This is the new SQ5. Same interior as most of the Audis, but it's got fake exhausts, and I think this guy is demonstrating it. I was looking at the same thing. Crazy. It sucks, it? right? Maserati. Do we care about Maserati? I don't think we do. Call me crazy, but I think that Alfa Romeo is not a good looking vehicle. I don't know what people see in this design. It's just. <laughs> this car, in my mind, looks like a laughing James May. Uh, look at. Look at the front of this car, and I'll think of James May. On the inside, however... And it's, it's cool. What I do like about this car, I've got to say, are these paddle shifters. They feel very solid. They're super big. So if you, uh, so if you use paddles a lot when you're driving, these will be great. And they're mounted on the column, not on the steering wheel. Okay, let's talk about this new Camry. Look at this Toyota Camry. I cannot believe I'm saying it, but the new Camry is sexy. And there's nothing to think about. The interior. There's nothing to think about. Every time I see it, I look at this is the all new Corolla hatchback that's been getting a lot of positive press because you can get it with a manual transmission. Get it with a manual transmission, man, so which is the best. All right, I'm totally going to be famous because I was just interviewed by Toyota's Japanese publisher, whatever they are. So look for me on Toyota's Japanese website. This is the what is it, ATSV. And it's the competitor to the M3. I love this car. One thing I don't like about this car is how small the wheels are. I feel that like the wheels again are too are not proportional enough. The wheels should be slightly bigger, which would give the car a more uh, muscular look. Now that is a muscular look. I wanted to see the new, not Navigator, but the new Aviator. Uh, and it's all the way up there. I saw it on the internet the other day and I completely fell in love. This vehicle is now one of the sexiest SUVs out there. This is it. This is like a combination of a luxury sedan with a, with a Range Rover, Volvo XC90. Uh, it's such a, such a beautiful car with a glorious interior. I know I use that word loosely, but look how beautiful this is interior is. This car, I predict, will sell very well. Just went downstairs, and uh, this is where all the rejects are. You have your Buick. Uh, this is the new Regal GS. Let's check out the new Regal GS. First thing you notice is how cool these seats are. How awesome is that in a Buick? Uh, very, very comfortable. The interior itself, uh, nothing to write home about. Uh, I feel like this little side thing it seems to be a trend with uh, with all these new all these automakers. Uh, again, you've got my 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 lovely fake stitching that's borrowed from uh, BMW. So good job, Buick. And uh, and yeah, this is it. Very very cool car. Now my dad owns an Outlander, uh, but there's a new Mitsubishi Eclipse that I always wanted. To so they borrowed the name from a sports coupe, and they gave it to a little SUV. And uh, what's cool about uh, Mitsubishi's is they're still made in Japan. They have a 10-year warranty, so it's a, it's a. Oh, wow, it looks like a CRV a little bit. This is the new Wrangler. I've got to say, I also like it. Jeep has uh, really stepped it up with this one. What I do love about this one is the interior, and you can still get it with the manual. Love it. This is another.
another car I was uh, looking forward to seeing. What is it? A Regal station wagon. Uh, it's very Europe inspired. Uh, huge trunk. Uh, this is my highlight of the 2018 New York International Auto Show. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, it was, uh, I've got to say, if, if I were to pick a car that, uh, that really stood out, I would probably pick the uh, the RS5 uh, Grand Coupe. Probably the best car for me here. And maybe the yellow M3. Uh, but other, other than that, I don't think I don't think this year's show was anything uh, was anything special. Uh, most of the cars uh, have already been out for, uh, for many, many months. So there's really nothing, uh, nothing new that I saw, uh, other than a couple of new Audis uh, and, and whatnot. I uh, hope you enjoyed this lengthy video, uh, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye. One thing I forgot to mention now that I'm leaving is, I got myself an early access pass to get in as early as possible and, uh, and do this video for you guys. But as I got in, early access pass made no difference because uh, it was crowded as soon as I walked in. I don't know what they sold to me, but I paid three times the price of the Virgin ticket. So if you are looking for, a, for an early access pass and you think it's gonna be empty, it won't. So, uh, so suck it, New York Auto Show. You suck this year.